Let's do some examples dealing with equations of lines in standard form. So, so far, we've had two other forms. We've had slope intercept, slope intercept, which is of the form y is equal to mx plus b. That's actually this right here. This is in slope intercept form. We've seen point slope form, point slope in the last video. That's of the form y minus some y value on the line being equal to the slope times x minus some x value on the line when you have that y value. So the point x1, y1 is on the line. This right here is an example of point slope form. And now we're going to talk about the standard form. And the standard form, right here, standard form is essentially putting all of the x and y terms onto the left-hand side of the equation. So you get ax plus by is equal to c. And I want to really emphasize that all of these, all of these are just different ways of writing the same equation. You can, if you've given this, you can algebraically manipulate it to get to that or to that. If you're given that, you can get to that or that. These are all different ways of writing the exact same relationship, the exact same line. So let's do a couple of examples of this. So here we have a line right here. We have an equation written in slope-intercept form. The slope is 3, the y-intercept is negative 8. Let's put it into standard form. So we just have to get the 3x onto the other side of the equation. And the best way I can think of doing that, let me rewrite the equation. y is equal to 3x minus 8. Let's subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. So if you subtract 3x from both sides, so you subtract 3x, subtract 3x, what do the left and right hand sides of the equation become? The left hand side becomes negative 3x plus y being equal to the 3x and the negative 3x cancel out, being equal to negative 8. And we're done. That's standard form. Standard form right there. Standard form, I guess people like it, because it has both of the coefficients on the left-hand side. But it's kind of useless in trying to figure out slope and y-intercept. I don't know what the slope and y-intercept is when I look at it in standard form. When I, I like my favorite is slope-intercept form, because it tells you exactly the slope and an intercept. Point slope easy to get to, and you can look at it and figure out the slope. But y-intercept, you have to do a little bit of work to figure it out. But at least you can just go immediately from the slope and a point to it. But anyway, let's go from this equation, which is written in point-slope form, and get it to the standard form. So we want to get it to this standard form, to the same type of standard form. So the good, a good thing to do, let's just distribute things out. y minus 7 is equal to negative 5 times x, negative 5x plus negative 5 times negative 12, which is positive 60. Now, we want all of the variable terms on the left, all of the, all of the constant terms on the right. So let's add 7 to both sides of this equation. So plus 7 to both sides of this equation. What does it become? Well, the 7 here, the minus 7 disappears, because negative 7 plus 7. So you're just left with a y being equal to negative 5x plus 67, plus 67. Now if we want this, this x term on the left-hand side, we can add 5x to both sides. So let's add 5x. Let's add 5x to both sides of this equation. And we will get y plus 5x is equal to, these cancel out, 67. Now, this is pretty much standard form. If you really want to be a stickler for it, you can you can rearrange these two. So it'd be 5x plus y is equal to 67. And you are done. Let's do one more of these. So this is in neither point slope nor in slope intercept form. It's just in some type of intermediary mixed form right there. This looks like some type of point slope, but this looks like something different, so it's really not point slope. But let's see if we can algebraically manipulate it to the standard form. So we get 3y plus 5. Let's distribute out this 4. So it's equal to 4x minus 36. 
do exactly what we did in the last. And I, I'm using different notation on purpose to expose you to different things. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, but I'm going to do it on the same line. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And so the left-hand side of this equation becomes 3y, because these two guys cancel out. And that is equal to 4x. And then what is minus 36 minus 5? That's minus 41. And now we want the x terms on the left-hand side. So let's subtract, let's subtract 4x from both sides of this equation. So negative 4x plus, and then minus 4x. What does our equation become? Well, the left-hand side just stays negative 4x plus 3y. And the right hand, well, the reason why we subtracted 4x is so it cancels out with that. You just have a negative 41. And we're done. We are in a standard form. Now, let's go the other way. Let's start with some equations in standard form and figure out their slope and y-intercept. And the best way I know to figure out the slope and y-intercept is to put it into slope-intercept form. So we want to put these, we want to put these equations right here into the form y is equal to mx plus b. So we're essentially solving for y. Let's do that. So the best thing to do here so let me rewrite it. 5x minus 2y is equal to is equal to 15. Let's subtract 5x from both sides. So minus 5x plus you have a minus 5x. These cancel out, and so you're left with negative 2y is equal to 15 minus 5x. And now let's divide everything by negative 2. If you divide everything by negative 2, everything by negative 2, what do we get? The left hand side just becomes a y. y is equal to 15 divided by negative 2 is negative 7.5. And then negative 5 divided by negative 2. You can imagine I'm distributing the negative 1 half, if you will. I'm dividing both of these by negative 2. So negative 5 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. 0.5x. And if you really wanted to put it in a slope intercept form, you could say that y is equal to, you could just rearrange these, 2.5x minus 7.5. You want the slope. It's right here. That is our slope. You want the y-intercept. It is, well, actually, let me be careful. It is right there. That is, it is negative 7.5. That is the y-intercept. And now this would be a form that's actually pretty straightforward to graph it in. Let's do this one. So once again, we just need to solve for y. So let's subtract 3x from both sides. So you get 6y is equal to 25 minus 3x. And then you can divide both sides by 6. So you're left with y is equal to 25 over 6 minus 3 over 6, or minus 1 half x. If you really want it in this form, you just rearrange this. y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 25 over 6. Where is the slope? Here is the slope, negative 1 half. That is the slope. Where is the y-intercept? That's the y-intercept. That is our b. The point 0, 25 over 6 is on the line. Let's do one more of these. Let's do one more of these. So we get 9x minus 9y is equal to 4. Just for fun, just, just for fun, let's just start off by just dividing both sides of the equation by 9. We don't have to do it that way, but this is kind of a fun way to do it, because the coefficients here will immediately become 1. So if you divide both sides of the equation by 9, if you divide everything by 9, it becomes. Actually, well, let's divide everything. Let's divide everything by negative 9, even better. Let's divide everything by negative 9. I'm just doing this for fun. So this first term will become negative x. The second term, we have a negative 9 divided by negative 9, will be a plus y. And then this last term will just become a negative 4 over 9. Now, actually, let me write this out here. Negative 4 over 9, I'm giving some space there. Now, we want the x on the right-hand side. So let's add x to both sides of this equation. Let's add x to both sides of this equation. These cancel out, and then the equation becomes y is equal to x minus 
ninths. Where is the slope? The slope is the coefficient on the x term. The slope is equal to 1. Where is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is right there. It is negative 4 ninths.